Oh, thanks for your time. So, Nano Bubble AgriTech, what are we? We're a new Kiwi company that have a new irrigation technology. What we do, we build machines that add high amounts of oxygen gas to water as nano bubbles. It's a new invention and it's taking off in a couple of industries, in particular hydroponic growing. And then now we're making it for large scale outdoor irrigation. Essentially, what we do is as I mentioned, we had heaps and heaps of oxygen gas about three or four times above the previous ceiling limit that water can hold of oxygen to your plants. And what does this do? Can massively improve your crop yield, which is the main reason people were looking to use our technology. We also get some improvements in water use efficiency, and it's a chemical-free method that can mitigate several soil diseases, such as Pythemal Phytophthora, the common ones. I've got a little video here from a grower. This was our first installation we did in Australia last summer. And the grower sent us this testimonial video of what was happening after it had been in for just nearly 12 months of operation. It gives a good example of the difference our systems can have. I'll talk about some of the New Zealand installations in a minute. Over here is the control. So this is zero, no nanobubbles. The video goes for two minutes. No misters. Well. And that's the same ridge line, the same aspect. You see the tree health through here. A lot of dead trees, a lot of misses. And these looked similar a couple of years ago. Even as you go down the hill, where it really should pick up uniformity like it is over the other blocks, there's just huge variance. Blocks looking much tidier, but we've still got these trees to deal with, which, you know, it's uncertain whether something like that's going to fully mature with the lack of painting and the splitting of the trunks and everything. So they're definitely doing something. This is the third nano bubble replicate. So this is just straight nano bubbles with no misting. And again, massive improvements in uniformity. Still not perfect, but I think we'll get it there within the next 12 months. You just see the difference in the variability, the size, the flush. All these are just pushing really well. And again, light crops will be playing a part in that as well, but definitely a massive difference in tree health over the last, last of the 12 months with the full season on it. It's looking good, can't just wait to see what these do over the next couple of years. So this is four is under net, nano bubble replicate one. So this has got the misting sprinklers on it as well. So misting kicks in at 35 degrees and turns off at 30. So it's been going the duration of the season. You can see the uniformity in these trees now. After a full season of nano bubbles on them. Obviously done a lot of tidying up through here. We haven't had to thin. There's a four, there's not a huge amount of crop on them this year. But what's there looks phenomenal. The size range is bigger than pretty much every other farm we've got. And it's probably more due to the limited crop load than there's anything else, but not a mark on them. Oh, one there. Nice and healthy and balanced. That's a very basic example of what our systems do, and, and we don't get such big example, big differences in other installations in New Zealand where the irrigation season's a lot less, but just really to show what the technology does at a high level. So our systems, we retrofit them to your incoming irrigation water after your pump on this side, or if your water's coming from a bore underground, flows through our system and in this bit in the background here that's an oxygen separator so it takes in the air around us splits out the 22 percent that's pure oxygen and that's what we plug into our water with our nano bubble system our systems work best with drip irrigation or low low hung sprinklers if we go through sprinklers that throw a really long way through the air because we're forcing water to hold oxygen at levels so much higher than what it will naturally is the ceiling all that gas comes out. So if we do it on a pivot irrigator or lateral irrigator where they throw 10 metres in front and 10 metres behind, 90% of the gas is gone so it doesn't do anything. So we retrofit those with mobile drip line, which is just there your sprinklers, the water dribbles out hoses on the end. And people use this a bit in the States and Australia where they need good water use efficiency. But we do that in our systems. We get all that bent, all the gas stays in, it goes into the ground and we get the benefit of that. This is what a system looks like on a pivot irrigator in the South Island, and it's exactly identical if you were using it on an orchard, and the oxygen separator and controls is housed in this little sheet over there. This is what one looks like on a working dairy farm. So we did our first dairy farm installation in Ashburton last year, a little five spanner, and this year at the moment we're doing our first 100 hectare full circle 10 spanner, so pretty good jump up in size, and also hoping to get our first big ones on orchards going over in Aussie. So this is from my first year trials three years ago at Mass University after a summer of irrigation with and without nano bubbles, nano bubbles on the bottom and then normal water on the top. What we see is just a bigger, healthier root mass, and that's what all nano bubble installations get in the hydroponic growing, and we also get that in soil base. And then we don't have all these real hard clumps here. That's a result of compaction, and the reason why we get less of those clumps and sort of a better soil growing environment is because 
every time you irrigate, you're getting heaps of oxygen down there. It swings the balance of your aerobic and anaerobic uh, microorganisms towards your aerobic ones. And they're the guys that turn over soils much faster and break down organic dead matter a lot faster and create that better growing environment. Result of this is much more production. So in our second year trials at Mass University, we retrofitted the pivot irrigator and over a five cut, six month summer irrigation season, we did 96% more production. And the last cut of that was coming into winter where there was no irrigation, it was all just rainfall, but that benefit of bigger root mats and healthier, better sort of soil structure carried over into the winter season. When we go to orchard-based crops, which is where the trial systems we're um, providing today are, in New Zealand, we've typically had on average around a 6% improvement in yield or fruit size. And that's off. Last year, we didn't get any results from our orchard installs because they all got flooded out. But the 2021-22 season, that was off five different installations on apples and kiwi fruit. We've also, so this, the installation in Australia, that was on citrus. And then there's other nanobubble companies out there in the world now doing a bit in the States that are just starting to get going. And they've had positive results on cherries almonds, blueberries, there's some published studies as well on maize, rice and tomatoes. But basically our biggest learning that we've had from all of this is that the more water you have from irrigation rather than rainfall, the bigger the response to our technology. So people in dry climates is best. Drip irrigation is better than sprinklers and any crop is possible. Probably the last thing I'm leaving on that is deep shallow rooting crops have a bigger response than deeper rooting ones, but yeah. So in terms of trial proposal, we're basically trying to get lots of smaller installations out on orchards to build up a data set that we can use to point to customers and to the growers themselves if they're keen to do a full installation in the future. Hey, if you use an Enabubble Agritech system, this is the benefit it's going to give to your business. So we're happy to provide a free small trial system, which you can use over sort of a half a hectare to one and a half hectare. In return, would expect that the grower installs it and runs it for the season and then provides feedback on the data and performance. In terms of installing it, it's about a one to two day installation, just a little bit of pipe work if you're from an irrigation person or a handyman on the farm. And then in terms of running it, it's all hands off once you put it in there, you just connect it to a big pack of bottles of gas, which might cost around a thousand to two thousand dollars a year to hire and use, but once it's installed, you don't have to do anything, you just run your orchard exactly as per normal, it turns on and off on its own and it doesn't require any power. Feed and you had good results and install it over your whole orchard, would be willing to give a 15% discount on the regular full pricing system. And hopefully by running a trial, you know exactly, you'll be able to do the maths on that and what benefit it provides to your business. In terms of the final system costs, if you're going to do a full installation, our costs at the moment are roughly $4,500 per litre per second equivalent water flow. So if you had a 30 hectare orchard and you have a 25 litre per second water flow from your pump, that's doing everything. It'd be a bit over $100,000 to buy and install, but you would then own this outright forever. The other alternative that we're hoping to bring in is leasing models, where it'll be roughly $1,200 per litre a second equivalent. So again, if if we're using that same example, you've got a 30 hectare orchard, 25 litre per second water flow, would be roughly $30,000 a year to lease that. Um, yeah, that's the presentation. If anyone has any questions, feel free to fire out or we can share the slides with you later as well if you get in touch via email.